Welcome to a presentation by Naresh Parag. Now I'd like to take you back to ancient times. Ancient times in the period of the Neanderthals. We find our friend a Neanderthal deep in the forest. It's early morning, he's just getting up, he rubs his eyes, does his business nearby, picks up his club and wanders off to look for some insects and berries to eat. As the day progresses, he sits in the shade of the trees and when lunchtime comes, he's off looking for some more grubs. In the afternoon, he scares off some smaller Neanderthals for entertainment. By sunset, he's eaten again and is feeling pretty tired and yawning. Soon it's about seven o'clock and he's fast asleep. He sleeps soundly throughout the night. And as daylight breaks, he awakens and is ready for another day. Now that is the day in the life of a Neanderthal. I want you now to fast forward to today and bring him along with you as our sun sets and it begins to get dark. Our friend would be yawning, so bring him in and place him in front of the TV screen for, say, a couple of hours. Then drag out the electronic games and let him have a go on them for another hour or so. After he's had a good time on them, bring him and put him in front of the computer and let him surf the World Wide Web for... Give him another hour on it. When you've done all that, take him to a big rock, ask him to lie down and fall fast asleep. Now remember, he was yawning when you brought him in. As he lays down now, he is going to have difficulty falling asleep immediately. He'll toss and turn and end up having a bit of a restless sleep compared to the sleep he got back in the forest. You see, there's something that you have in common with him, and it's called a body clock. Located in your brain is the pineal gland, about the size of a pea, which produces something called melatonin. This melatonin forms part of the system that regulates the sleep-wake cycle by chemically causing drowsiness. Light stops the pineal gland from producing melatonin so we can stay awake. Only with the onset of darkness the melatonin starts to flow. It peaks in the middle of the night and from there on it gradually falls off. So what did you do by putting our Neanderthal friend in front of the TV, the game station and the internet screen? Yes, you confused his body clock. You confused his pineal gland and his production of that melatonin. The blue light coming from these electronic devices scrambled the messages inside. They now say, hey, I can see light. It's daytime. Don't go to sleep. Cancel that order for melatonin. It's time to go clubbing. Well, most of us sit in front of screens every day. First thing in the evening till the last thing at night. There might be some final work in front of the computer screen or TV show to catch up with just before tucking into bed. Your body clock has had all the wrong messages from that blue light screaming out to you. It's daylight, so stay awake. Not to mention the various emotions you awoke by fully engaging them from the screens. Now with all the juices activated and flowing, we wonder why we don't get any good sleep anymore. If you went out camping with uh, no electronic devices, then you would have had the experience of looking at your watch and saying, it's only nine o'clock. How many times has that happened to you when you are left alone in nature? You feel really tired and sleepy. Your pineal gland has been hard at work. Your body adjusted to nature. It's dark, so it's time to go to bed. Bring down the shutters. Don't forget that in the morning, stand out in the light or some bright light early for about 10 minutes. Don't stare at the sun or the bright light. You can read or work in front of the bright light. This 
will reset your body clock to awake its daylight time, time to go hunting. What's in the fridge? So, what you have to do is plan to wind down. At least half an hour to an hour before bedtime. Get rid of the TV, the internet, the games, everything. Set yourself a date and time to start this and stick to it diligently for two weeks. The conditioning over that period of time would make it part of your routine and therefore make it easy for you to follow. To prepare for bedtime, start turning down and dimming the place. Have something warm, definitely not caffeine-based like coffee, chocolate or some teas, perhaps a herbal tea. Start to unwind and release the day. By doing this, your body would see the light and do what comes naturally, giving you a restful night's sleep every time. I've made a recording of a gentle introduction and a gentle end to the day, deep in the ancient lands of Northern Australia, the place for which locals refer to as the dream time, a place that's so remote it's only accessible by boat or helicopter. I made the recording of the natural sounds from dawn through to sunrise, and in the second part, from sunset and on to dark. The natural sounds that trigger time to wake up, and the natural sounds that trigger time to go to sleep. The recordings are in keeping with the nature sounds experienced by our Neanderthal friend. Playing the recording just before going to bed would signal sunset and the time for rest has arrived. The time to enter the sleep pattern and rest. In the morning, it would replace your normal wake-up alarm. You would hear the sunrise signals to leave the sleep pattern for wide awake, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed time. With added reinforcements inlaid into the recording, you'd be able to give yourself a healthy start and finish to your day every day. Further details are at the end of this presentation. And with that note, I thank you for listening, and I hope that you will join me in the rest of the Minefield series, where we'll cover programs on how to exploit the Neanderthal, the endorphin dream time, the breeze of life, and take a laterally new look at motivation, stress, finance, and depression. In the meantime, happy hunting and sweet dreams to you as I look forward to walking in your company soon. I'm Naresh Barad. For further details on the bedtime recording, please visit www.amindfield.com.